Hi, it's Mark Marmer from Signature Electric. So we're uh, at a condominium here, uh, out just uh, south end of uh, Markham. And uh, I guess you can see the generator behind, you know, we got some kind of uh, problem going here. A lot of times the videos that we talk about are um, sustainability, uh, electric vehicles, solar, things of that nature, things that are interesting and cutting edge. But our roots at Signature Electric are, on, are really electrical contracting. And I just thought this was an interesting opportunity to see the, uh, the team uh, at work and to see what we're doing. This is a service call that came in about uh, 5 o'clock one day. Uh, the call was that a transformer had blown. It was actually a pad mount transformer that's sitting here. That's a transformer that's now sitting back here on a skid. And um, the, the building had no power. So we uh, sent an electrician out to investigate. And uh, in fact, something was wrong with the transformer. The issue was that the uh, condominium had no power other than their emergency generator and really couldn't manage to continue. At that time, we, um, we managed to get a rental, transform uh, rental generator, uh, ran out all the cables, I'll show it to you in a few minutes, down into the electrical room, uh, disconnected the service from this pad mount transformer, and uh, did a temporary connection from the generator. We needed the electrical safety authority sign off, and by about 11 o'clock that night, the guys were on their way home, and the buildings had power. So that's step one is getting the building up with power. The next step is to, uh, to figure out what exactly what happened and how we're going to manage it. Even though the building has power again, there, you're still under quite a bit of pressure. This rental generator is quite an expensive uh, uh, rental on, on a per week basis, plus it's continuously consuming diesel fuel. So this bill is adding up and adding up and adding up. So we have to keep moving as quickly as we can forward but carefully and safely so that we're working safely, but also that whatever we're doing here, whatever, whatever choices we're making about these cables, that we're making the correct choices. So as it was, the guys came back, they, um, they've started uh, testing the cables and I'll show you downstairs. Some of the cables were literally burnt inside the ducts. There's a set of ducts that bring these cables back into the building and back into the electrical room underground. And we found that several of these cables are damaged. They're burnt right through. That's the reason that the, uh, that the transformer burnt out. So even, even getting the transformer moved off, with that, the hydro the night of put this transformer back on. We had to arrange the next day with an isolation, have the transformer moved over so that we could continue the work that we're doing. So we're, at the moment, what we're doing is we've already pulled some of the cables out. We'll uh, continue our, uh, our testing. Uh, once we clear the duct, we're going to today is going to actually happen. We'll bring somebody in with a camera so that we can take a look. I want to make sure that the inside of the duct is not damaged, that it hasn't, um, it hasn't collapsed or that there isn't a problem inside because we could easily pull the cables. These are big cables and there's a lot of them. We could easily pull these cables back in, damage it again, and either have a problem immediately or even a problem a year down the road. So while you have to move quickly, because of the cost, you have to move carefully and make careful decisions. This, this really is something that comes uh, with experience. I'm showing you a bigger job here. This isn't the only thing we do, but it was interesting. I had, we had the opportunity to take some film here for you. I thought you'd want to see it. Um, but, you know, this is, this is just sort of one scope of jobs. Let's take a few minutes. We'll go down. We'll take a look at downstairs. We'll take a look at the cables. And as the job continues to progress, we'll come back and... Uh, and, and keep you posted and hopefully this will be uh, you know an interesting video when we're done. Thanks. Okay so the, we're down in the electrical room. The work that had to be done on the first night when the guys arrived was to remove these these cables came in through these ducts down into the main electrical switch and fed the service. So these cables had to be isolated so they pulled these cables up removed them from the main lug and then the cables that you saw from the generator were brought through here and we temporarily connected them in here. So this also required um, uh, electrical safety authority. We can't connect the generator without the okay of the electrical safety authority. So that coordination had to happen that night. And as I say, by, uh, by about 11 o'clock, uh, we were back on. So now we're inside, we're at the other end of those ducts. The guys have already pulled some of the cables out and uh, we're this tugger setup that we have here is to assist us in getting it out. And as we do our testing and decide how many cables we need to pull out, uh, whether they're all, we're all of them or some of them, uh, we'll have a better idea once we scope the ducts. We'll end up cleaning these ducts, 
Uh, in the meantime, while this is happening, now that we've got a length of the cable, uh, we can uh, look around for the supply of the cable, uh, let the customer keep apprised pretty much every day. We contact the customer, let them know where we're doing both uh, in terms of time and in cost. Again, um, we're, there's always feels a little bit of pressure on our back because of the cost of that generator. The, just the fuel alone is adding up. It's, a, it's the equivalent of, uh, of uh, running a tractor trailer down the highway 24 hours a day at full speed uh, with fuel. So it, it adds up very quickly. So we, we're trying to keep the cost down. At some point, we're also keeping track of everything we have here. Um, this could become an insurance claim and the insurance company will want to know exactly what you did. They want to see the cables. They want to have an idea of, of what did it look like in the duct. We'll, when we do the, the video in the duct, we'll keep a copy of the information that we can pass along either to the customer or to an insurance company. If we take readings with our, with our MEGR, we'll keep track of those readings so that we can report them down uh, as best we can on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think I'm just trying to tell you that there's a lot of moving parts and it takes, uh, it takes an experienced crew and uh, the right context to be able to make this all happen in a fairly quick manner. And our goal is to keep the cost down as best we can uh, and to keep uh, the condo with uh, power as much as possible. We have a few of the cables that were damaged on the ground, so I'm, I'm going to take you over. I'll show you what, the, what kind of damage was happening there and uh, where, where the fault was. This is just a little bit of the cable pulled out. There's 24 runs. Each run, we now know because we got one pulled out, each run is about 250 feet long. So this is pretty substantial cable if you take it. I, this is 750 MCM aluminum. It's aluminum, so it's not too heavy, but the size is pretty, pretty massive. So if you can take a look, this is, this is what had happened. This burnt off inside the duct. So this is a this dead short caused the uh, caused the outage. It caused the uh, damage to the transformer. We've already got a few pieces pulled out. This is just I believe this is just uh, one run here that's on the floor. So imagine there's 24 of these runs that we still have to pull out. There was another piece of cable here that was uh, that had already been damaged the night of. So uh, it's clear when there's this much damage that the cables need to be replaced. But we need to be careful because when this happens, there's no reason to think that something in an adjacent duct wasn't damaged or there's something wrong with the duct. So we have, we have to make careful, clear decisions about what we're gonna do because if we get all, half of these pulled in, go back and connect the transformer and it doesn't work, we've lost all that time, we could damage another piece of equipment. So careful and, and intelligent decisions need to be made. Again, th this, is, this comes with, uh, with experience so uh, we'll again we'll keep you posted and uh, as the job moves on and as this pile gets bigger and bigger the next time we come back to film you'll get an idea of how much cable this cable doesn't belong to us it belongs to the customer um, we'll keep it here they may want to use it for some kind of evidence or whatever the case is and at some point when they're ready if they would like us as part of the job to remove this cable we'll certainly remove it but at the moment we're just doing what we need to do to keep the job moving forward okay so we're back at the uh, job site now we've pulled all the old cables out I'll show them to you in a couple of minutes some of the cable runs have already been put in I got here a little late to be able to get you that but we've got more to come in maybe I'll be able to show you so the new cables are laying on the floor ready for um, installation when we get finished we still have a, a little bit of time so what's happened so far is we came we responded to the first call we've uh, determined what the problem was we pulled out some of the we had the transformer removed we dealt with the ESA to get the uh, generator installed we've since then uh, pulled all the cables out we, threw a cam we put a camera into the duct to make sure the duct wasn't damaged. There was water in the duct, so we had a hydrovac truck. It took almost a whole full hydrovac truck full of water out. Now the guys have cleaned the duct. We put, pull a wire brush through the duct and make sure that everything is clean. A full, full, first set of wires is getting pulled in and the job's moving forward. So the next steps is to finish pulling in the new wires and uh, then we'll move forward to finalize the connections and. Uh, get rid of the generator. So we're just, I promised you we'd sort of step you through. So uh, you've seen this piece of it. I'll take you over in a few minutes and we'll take a look. Uh, remember there was a, just a couple of uh, wires that were on the floor and I showed you we eventually we'd collect them up in one spot. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute.
Okay, so if you remember, we were here, we pulled out one or two runs and we had them sitting just behind that transformer in the corner. Well, these are the cables that actually came out. This is all 24 cables. They're all rolled up on the floor and this is what it looks like. So we're replacing all of these cables. A variety of them were damaged and we just, once we pulled them out, it just cost-wise, it didn't make sense not to just replace them all, clean the ducts and start from scratch to be as careful as we can or trying to avoid having this, of course, happen again. So uh, we'll confer with the customer these, for these aluminum cables as to how they want, what they want done with them, whether they want them disposed of, and we'll determine. In the meantime, it's, they're out of the way, they're not bothering any of the equipment, and they're not interfering with the job. We're back at the site now, and we're getting towards the end of the job. We're just pulling in the last uh, couple of runs of cable. So it's all laid out along the side here. If you take a look, and you'll see what we've done is the cable has been delivered on a truck, and the truck is all set up with the reels on it, so that we can simply reel it right off. So this was, uh, this was part of the organization and setup to make this happen. Uh, it's, it's worked out very well. It means uh, less handling of the cable. The other thing is that we've done this m over more than one day. Part of the reason for that is we didn't want to leave cable here overnight. Um, it, the weather is cold and we want the cable to be as easy to handle uh, as possible. Leaving it overnight allows the cable to get uh, cold and it's stiff and difficult to work with. So we'll uh, have a chance to take a look and see just how the pulling in of the cable uh, works. Okay so the cables are getting pulled in now. The, the game plan is to organize this as best you can with the, the fewest people possible to be efficient with the equipment that you're using and what have you. So we have three guys out here feeding these cables and doing the setup. Uh, that's probably about the minimum you can manage with this amount of cables. They're applying lubricant to the cables. We want the cables to go in uh, smoothly uh, when they're going in. That they, There won't be too much tension on them and they'll be in good condition when they get into the duct. And we'll take you downstairs in a minute and I'll show you what the other end of the pulling looks like. We got basically one person with a piece of equipment pulling all the way to these cables in and it, uh, once the equipment is set up it works just beautifully. So this is the second last run. They have one more after this and they'll organize everything for the night and then tomorrow we'll head back. We're going to put the transformer back on the pad, finish the connections downstairs. Okay, so we're down now in the, at the other end. We've been down here a couple of times. Uh, everything's pretty well organized. We're just needing one person down here to operate the puller. The tugger's bolted down and uh, that'll help to pull the cables in. Once it gets in, they'll disconnect them and we'll uh, set up for the next run. Okay, I waited till just a little quieter without the tugger running. So we've got these cables pulled in now. Uh, the guys will tidy up here at the end of the day. And then tomorrow we'll return. The game plan will be to turn off the generator. That'll allow the generator for the emergency generator for the building to come on and we'll uh, provide power for some of the lights and the elevators while we're working. We'll strip out these cables that are here from the generator. We'll rework these cables in and we'll get started on that a little bit early so that we can land all the cables properly. Mid-morning we've got the, uh, elect the utility coming to put the uh, transformer back on the pad, finish the connections at their end and the electrical safety authority to uh, uh, give us an okay uh, to turn everything back on. All that's already pre-arranged. I, I just can't tell you how much work there is in the background to make, aside from the, the hard work these guys are doing, to make this come together. The coordination is needed, the number of phone calls, the number of emails, it's just uh, enormous. And it's come together really quite well. We had a couple of little glitches in the middle with some of the suppliers and that got straightened away. So it's going very well. We'll head back tomorrow and get a chance to see the job. And then what will happen is uh, over the weekend, everything will be back to normal and then uh, we'll return uh, probably on Tuesday one person will return just to tidy up, bring the rest of the equipment back, uh, tidy up the ropes and stuff, and, uh, and the job will be complete. Um, and so that's, that's it, and we'll check back tomorrow. Okay, so we're back now. We're in the electrical room. We're nearing to the end of the job. The guys are uh, landing these cables. They're cutting and landing these cables in the uh, top of the main switch. The same time the uh, hydro was out front uh, changing out the transformer and making those connections. And uh, we'll, once everything is finished, we'll have the ESA here. And uh, today will be the day we turn the power back on. At the moment, 
uh, the, our generator's off and the emergency generator's running, so there's some light in the building. That's why we have so much light in this room. So uh, we'll take a look and uh, see what's happening outside. We didn't quite get here in time to uh, watch a transformer being placed by the crane, but uh, it's on the pad now, and the, this is the utility tying in both the high voltage and low voltage side. So we're just sort of coordinating between the, the crew downstairs and the crew upstairs. Uh, eventually everything will uh, be finished. We'll get the uh, ESA back here and then uh, it's, it's a bit of a process in terms of getting the high voltage on and coordinating, taking all, all the grounds off and uh, there's sign offs that need to be done. So it's a, it's a bit of a process, but uh, it's actually uh, going quite well this morning and uh, the, at least the guys downstairs are pleased to be uh, out of the cold. So uh, we'll, we'll get you a shot later on of uh, everything all closed back up and uh, back to normal. It's nice for after almost two weeks now. The, we don't have the sound of the generator running in the background. Uh, we haven't taken the generator away. It's still back over here. The reason that we did, we turned the generator off this morning and we uh, rolled up the cables part way. But until everything is in place and everything is working and we're 100%, I don't want to have the generator removed because it's always possible that there could be a glitch or an issue or whatever the case is. And then we wouldn't want to have to bring the generator all the way back. So it's just a bit of a, a safety thing. The generator company actually was here this morning and did shut down the generator and did move some of the cables. But we're going to leave this here. And uh, frankly, it's a long weekend. It probably won't get moved till Tuesday anyways. But uh, that in, in part, this was done uh, intentionally. Okay, so uh, the job's gone pretty well and, uh, you know, I don't wish this kind of situation on anybody. This is a big expense and a big job and a big disruption, but we were able to handle it. Uh, we, we were trusted by the condominium corporation and the management company to do this, and we're happy to do this kind of work or anything else. If somebody's looking for some help for electrical work or a variety of other things that we do, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We're in the Toronto area. Our phone number is 416. 4908093 if you want to get a better idea of some of the services that we have uh, feel free to reach us at our website signatureelectric.ca and uh, we this is an interesting kind of video but we have other videos as well you can wa see that on our youtube channel youtube.com slash signature electric wishing everybody uh, happy and uh, safe and warm time